All right, the last section in Chapter 5 is going back to rates of change in rational functions. So the good news is nothing changes. Uh, the ARC is still the slope of a secant between two points. The IRC is still the slope of a tangent line at a single point. Uh, so when it's just a regular find an IRC question, just substitute in the point and another point that's really close to it. So those calculations don't change just how we generate the, the y values that go with the x values change. Um, we're using the rational. So we're going to concentrate a little bit on some other aspects of the IRC and the ARC, uh, specifically the IRC for this unit. So we're going to look at the effects of asymptotes uh, and, and how that affects the IRC and how we can spot some other things in here. So uh, let's have a look here. So we're going to try and just answer the green questions. Here's our function. Uh, we use some graphing technology just to graph it uh, quickly here. You can see there's an asymptote at negative 5. So right there, and we get that from the base uh, because our restriction would be x cannot be negative 5. And you can see there's no hole there. We could do a check on the left and right if we really needed to, but this is what the graph looks like. So a quick review of a few keywords. Uh, when is it increasing. So increasing means as you read from left to right the graph or the y values are going up. So if you look here, let's grab a highlighter, when is this graph going up? Well if I read from left to right, well it's definitely increasing on that interval and if I look over here these are definitely increasing and even when I got out here it's not increasing as quickly, but it's still increasing. So we can say this is increasing on the entire interval. So we could say it's increasing when x is any real number, but it isn't increasing when x is negative 5 because there's a totally other problem there. Okay, so that's every real number, the entire interval. Okay, this graph is increasing when we read from left to right. When is it decreasing? Well, it's not. There are no locations where it's decreasing, so it's not decreasing ever. <clears throat> and again, all of this is <coughs> based on the idea that we're reading from left to right. When is it positive? So when are my y values positive? So let's take a look. Well, <coughs> this entire interval over on this side, these are all positive. And if we found the end behavior going to the left, we'd see it stays above zero. Uh, so they would still be positive. On this side, we'd have to find the x-intercept somewhere in here. Okay, and we should be able to see from the equation that has an x-value of 2. Okay, because that would set the numerator to 0, so it has an x-intercept at 2 comma 0. So everything to the right of x equals 2 is a positive value, so we would say uh, this interval on the left here, so when x is less than negative 5 and when x is greater than 2, we have positive values. Okay, let's change colors. Uh, and the last part, when is it negative? Well, that's going to be everything inside this interval. So we have to watch how we write this. So x has to be less than 2, but it has to be greater than negative 5. So it's negative on this interval. Cool. So just getting a few of those words back into play. Uh, what is the IRC at x equals negative 5? Okay, so we will do this with a formula at some point, but right now we could also just go to, oh sorry, at negative 5, there's a problem. So when you look at x equals negative 5, that's our asymptote. So the graph itself doesn't actually exist there, so there is no IRC. Okay, it's actually undefined. Um, you could look at that green line and think of it as uh, having a rise over run of 1 over 0. It goes up 1, moves to the right 0, moves up 1, goes to the right 0, so it's undefined. That's one way to think about that. Uh, but at the IRC, for the IRC at the asymptote, there isn't one. It's an undefined value. 
Now, what happens to the IRC as you approach x equals negative 5? Well, that's a totally different story. So if we take, let's draw a little line here. Uh, here is my IRC. So you can see at this location, I could find an IRC. I could move this up here, and I could start to make this a little steeper. Assuming it lets me grab that. There we go. There's a new IRC, and it's steeper. As I move further and further along, it doesn't take that much to see that this IRC would get really, really steep the farther up we go. Uh, on this side down here, the IRC would get very steep as well. Okay, and the slopes would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, on the right hand side, they would be positive. Uh, on the left hand side, they would also be positive. So these slopes would just have very large positive values as you approach uh, the x equals negative 5 for the IRC. Okay, so we would have, let's write that down, large positive slopes as you approach. Uh, so what happens to the IRC as you approach x going to positive or negative infinity? So this is our n behavior concept again. So what happens to the IRC if we take this, oops, and we start moving this black line towards the outside? Well, it's getting flatter compared to when we we're moving towards the asymptote getting flatter still. And if we extended this far enough, you'd start to see our IRC starts to head towards zero. Okay, it starts to head towards being a horizontal line. So we can say, what happens to the IRC as we approach? We, the IRC goes towards a zero value. Now it won't actually get exactly to zero because this graph will always be continue to climb. Uh, but it's one of those things when you get far enough away, it might as well be zero. So when we look at our asymptotes, we are expecting to have IRCs that get very steep and approach an undefined value. As we look at our, sorry, our vertical asymptotes, when we look at our horizontal asymptotes, we expect our IRC to start moving towards a zero value or a flat or horizontal line. Okay, uh, so what is the IRC at x equals negative 3? So this is the traditional question we've asked all this several times this year. So if I'm looking at x equals negative 3, I should choose another x value at, say, negative 3.1. And we just substitute it into our regular IRC question. We just do a slope formula. So we'll take this guy and we'll put in uh, negative 3.1 minus 2, negative 3.1 plus 5, minus, now we put in our negative 3, negative 3 minus 2, negative 3 plus 5, and all of that is going to be over our h value, or in this case 0 0.1, or maybe I should write it this way just so it looks familiar. Uh, we can go negative 3.1 minus negative 3. Okay, and then we just evaluate inside the brackets exactly like we've done in the past. I'll see if my calculator works here, otherwise I might just leave this for you. Uh, so the top would be negative 5.1 divided by 2.9 minus negative 5 over 2, and all of that is divided by negative 0.1. Okay, and then I'm going to pause this and use my calculator. Oops, I got a correction here. This is not 2.9, this is 1.9. See, I'm trying to rush. So this is 1.9. Let's try that again. So I'll grab my calculator and I'll retry that. All right, I'll... did my calculator work? And please check. Don't rely on me here, so I'm going to go 1.84 is approximately what I should get for my IRC by substituting in negative 3 and negative 3.1. Uh, if you make that interval smaller, you might get a more accurate number. Okay, now the next part here, I'm just going to hide part of this. Uh, we did a general formula for the IRC. This is not something I will ever ask you for a rational function. 
but I just wanted to show you that that whole process still works even with rationals. So if we take our IRC, our quotient, our difference quotient, that's the formula we use for our IRC, and I substitute in x plus h for the x's. Okay, so here's my x plus h's. Let's just get some highlighters going here real quick. There's the x plus h going in for the x in the original function. Minus f of x, I just leave everything alone, and all of that's over h. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of fancy algebra. We're going to get a common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to get a common denominator on the top. Okay, and then because I'm dividing by h, I can just move that up to join the other divisors. Uh, if you want to pause it there and check your algebra, try multiplying it out by all means. Again, I'm never going to ask you this on a test or anything. Uh, let's just scroll down here. Okay, and then uh, I clean up the algebra on the top, so I'm doing a little bit of distributive property. For those people who are intrigued, just multiply in, multiply in, that kind of thing. Okay, so you have three terms times two terms, you should get six terms. And now, just like we did in our previous ones, we expect a bunch of things to cancel. So x squared and x squared cancel. 5x and 5x cancels. xh and xh cancels. Uh, what else have I got left here? 2x and 2x cancel, and 10 and 10 cancel. So just like we did before, a whole bunch of things disappear. Okay, that's good news. So that means we're left with 5h minus negative 2h all over h, x plus h plus 5, x plus 5. Okay, and then you notice on the top that simplifies to be 7h and just like we had with our polynomial expressions the h's will cancel and get rid of the h in the denominator which is what I want because that's the one that causes the problem so these guys disappear and then if I set h equal to 0 that simplifies the bottom even further and I'm going to get this really lovely expression, which you won't be able to find or match where it comes from as a shortcut until you've taken calculus. So if we set h to 0, this guy goes to 0. And then we're left with 7 over x plus 5. So that is your general equation for an IRC for this, for this rational function. And then if we do a quick little test, set x equal to negative 3 which is the previous question we just did then your IRC becomes 7 over negative 3 plus 5 all squared which is going to be 7 divided by 4 make sure I got enough room here which is going to be 1.75 and if you compare 1.75 to this answer we got here 1.84 they're very close the reason they're not the same is that the 0.1 interval isn't quite small enough to get us to this value of 1.75 okay so again I'm never going to ask you that but for those people who like the algebra that's something to look at uh, so quick summary IRC is undefined at vertical asymptotes you can't find an IRC at a vertical asymptote period IRC at points that approach a vertical asymptote, so this is getting close to it, they become very large and positive or very large and negative. So your slopes get steep. Slopes are steep. Okay, the IRC near a horizontal uh, asymptote, they start to approach zero. This means they get very flat. Cool. Okay, last part. This is, uh, you might need this for your homework questions. So applications for IRC. An IRC for a revenue function is called the marginal revenue. It represents the estimated additional revenue from selling one more item. So if you're a business, this is a way you can see if I produce one more item, how much money am I making and where should I potentially terminate how many items I make. Uh, so the IRC represents the rate of change at any specific point in time for a function. Okay, so we'll try more of those when we're in person. I apologize for not being there, but children get ill, so I'm taking care of them. So uh, a few homework questions to try. Just a reminder, we have a test on Friday, 
and thanks for your patience and understanding.